Greetings, everyone. So, I've been thinking this for a while now, that gaming has kind of a narcissist problem, and it's becoming really, really obvious. With the movie industry, it's pretty, you know, flagrant, because they're like, oh, it's your fault for not liking this movie. You have to consume what we put before you. And now it's really spreading through the gaming industry, and it's kind of sad. So, recently, Bethesda, who... There are a couple articles out there. I highly recommend looking them up. Oh, it's your fault 76 was bad. You wanted an always online multiplayer game. I mean, you did say consistently we wanted co-op, not an always online game as a service game, but we're just going to leave that out because we're gaslighting you. Oh, uh, Starfield could have been a way more compact experience. We wanted to make it a more compact experience, but you, the player, you wanted it way larger, so we had no choice but to make it that way. We're the victims. You guys are the problem. How dare you not like the game or play it wrong or have an opinion that we don't approve of? So, as you can guess, we're here on Starfield's Steam page, and if you haven't heard... Bethesda started leaving comments on negative reviews. And I don't know how other people are uh, describing this, but I'm going to show you how bad this level of narcissism is. Now, first off, as you can see, user reviews are going down recently because of this. And to show you, in good faith, all reviews are here, but I'm going to, eventually, I'm going to switch this over to negative. Just want to show you like what the most prominent reviews are right now. Negative comment. Negative comment. Negative comment. And then there are some positive reviews. But let's uh, switch over to negative here. Comment. 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 I don't, I don't think I need to say it every time. Comment every bro, it's all reviews. Somehow this one didn't get to um, anything, but like, what, what what can you really say is not look to not looking forward to Elder Scrolls Six anymore? Comment. Actually, let's see what the comment on that one is. Let's see. Our team is constantly working to ensure Starfield is a polished experience. Blah blah blah. Recent updates. There are many different ways to enjoy Starfield. We're playing. We highly suggest the Discord connect to other players. Okay. Come like every single negative review they're commenting on if it's of substance now that one up there that might just be like one they missed or there's just not really anything to say there yeah look at this every single I'm not going to lie, I did a bit of a preview before starting this video, um, so I knew they pommed a lot. I I don't think I thought it would be this bad. Like, wow. It really is practically every single negative review. Let's see how far we have to go before we find the next negative review that doesn't have a comment on it. Okay, anytime now. I was going to say, if this doesn't load, then um, <laughs> the only reason we're not seeing more negative... Oh, here we go, here we go. We finally found one without a negative comment. I mean, not without a, a negative review, without a comment. All right, let's see uh, how far we have to go to get to the next one.
Okay, that was significantly less far, but as you can see, you can keep going down. Like, this is... Now, I've seen developers comment on reviews before, and typically it's like after they put it like this really big update or saying like, hey, thank you for the feedback. We, we're sorry you didn't like the game. We're, gonna, we're working on this. And when it's after a big update, it's like, hey, we patched this problem that you were having. You know, give our game there a shot and see if you like it now. Bethesda is just... Oh, here's another one. But it looks like it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it just it, okay. It's just literally by Baldur's Gate three. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry that that was kind of funny. But you know, it's like there's not been really any comments on the positive reviews. I mean, I wasn't really keeping track of that going down, but okay. So we finally hit the part where they're not coming anymore. So look how far we had to go before they stopped this behavior. I stand corrected. <sighs> okay, that might just been the weird one out. So let's uh, let's head back here. And actually, re we're all here because this is cringe and we're here to make fun of it. Haha. <laughs> Let's read some of these. Thank you for taking the time to provide your review, and we are sorry to hear that you were disappointed with ensuring many loading screens were while playing. Now keep in mind, Gambrio 3 is a shit engine. Like, no other engine has the issue of as many loading screens as Gambrio 3. And no, I'm not calling it Creation 2, because first of all, it was creation 1.5 until they decide marketing it as creation 2 was a good idea. And it is basically the same. And it's Gamebrio overhauled to like the third iteration. I'm not calling it creation 2. It's Gamebrio 3. While there may be many loading screens between vast traveling, just consider the amount of data for the expansive gameplay. All right, look, if I was really dedicated to roasting them right here, I would basically make a cutaway and then show you a loading screen multiple times where loading screens were like not even 10 seconds away from each other, which really wouldn't be hard in a shopping district. Which would uh, it just, <clears throat> where were we? Defensive gameplay, procedures are flaw load flawlessly. <laughs> no, in under three seconds. We believe that the shortcoming will not hinder our players from getting lost in the world we create. Yeah, no one's getting lost in Starfield. The only time I ever got when like, people got lost in Starfield is because there wasn't really a map, a, a workable map. And and I'm not even crapping out for this, but like when you're exploring New Atlantis for the first time, it, it takes you a good length of time to find out where all the stores are. And even in my playthrough you would see me getting lost because I couldn't remember where the store I wanted to go to was. And a good chunk into my playthrough, I actually discovered that a building that I just thought was a government office was actually another store. Blah, blah, blah. Three seconds. Starfields, number G with 100, blah, blah, sales pitch, blah, blah, blah. Guys, I'm not going to scroll up every time. Oh, they didn't even put in pop proper spacing here. Paragraphing, rather. We appreciate you taking the time to provide your review, and we're sorry to blah, blah, blah. If you feel like you, things got boring, there is so much more to do than just the main mission. Yeah, I know all the side quests are kind of boring, too. I mean, I vibe with this game, but mm -mm. if you don't vibe with this game, I don't blame you for thinking this game is garbage. I vibe with it, so I'll say, hey, I liked it. And I think it's overall a positive game, but like if you did not vibe with it, I understand where you're coming from. There are many side missions, blah blah blah, people, blah blah blah, story of Starfield. Yeah, by the way, the story of Starfield is like almost universally poorly written. I'm like like Emil is straight up a terrible writer. Like there are so many plot like heat leeches are terramorphs. Like the implication is over the hundreds of years, no one DNA tested heat leeches. No one kept the heat leech as a pet. No one happened to just walk onto heat leeches transforming into terramorphs. 
it assumes that basically no video got out of the planet where this became really obvious. Just, there's no survivors. No one basically who had already evacuated had seen this. It just flat out plot hole after plot hole. Many cringe characters. Like you go on the Starfield subreddit. And I, it's a pretty cool place. I have to give credit to the uh, moderators. I'm assuming the moderators have done a lot of work in the behind the scenes to keep that place a very civil. Because you have people who can talk how they like the game. You can talk have people who talk how they don't let them hate the game. And you could have people just having discussions on the game's flaws. And it's, for the most part, from what I've seen, very civil. So kudos to the moderators of the subreddit. But a prevailing point on the subreddit is that all the characters some companions just have the most cringe terrible responses to the end of your quest lines yeah no you can't smuggle stuff because there's no dynamic economy smuggling stuff is kind of really pointless unless you want to just create your own diehard art role playing our outposts like i'll be real with you like i got to the point where i kind of realized outposts were completely i was only building because i wanted to like, there is no point behind building them. I could just build one large ship and put all my stuff on the ship with a ton of cargo. Starship building, I'm, that was actually pretty good. And customize them to your enjoyment. Eh, for the most part. The things you visited, blah, blah, blah. Have hundreds of uh, quests, sales pitch. Massively changing outcome through... <laughs> no. It has a bare minimal branching story. Try creating characters with different backgrounds. That's pretty pointless. The role playing in this game is not that deep. Like if I if I went to play Baldur's Gate three, and I went to create a completely different character with a completely different background, that would have a huge impact on my overall experience and the narrative direction and the way I'd play the game. Like I start as a what was it a warlock? Uh, no one of the it was one of the three mage classes. I can't remember which one it was, and I, I, didn't, I didn't have a patron, so maybe sorcerer. Or is it wizard? I think I read books, so I think wizard. Either way, point being is that I kind of like had the side character that would do a bunch of stuff. I'm like, oh, that's really fun. I really enjoy actually using this stealth character. And I thought of actually just re-rolling my, because I wasn't that part of the campaign, re-rolling my entire character to go in and then play a stealth build, which I don't often do, but it was just really fun there. And in that case, I would have a completely different background. I would have a completely different play style, and that would matter. Now, you go into Starfield, the AI is so bad that I don't even know how they got AI this bad. The enemies don't even move around. They don't reposition. So laying traps, pointless. Explosives are so weak. They're I really just end up never using it. Um, the guns didn't have a lot of variety. Sniping, because stealth sucked. Really didn't work, but Stealth Sniper, again, was the best build you can build and make. So, okay, let's see. Starfield, find things to do to complete the main story, the adventures, and end. Yes, it really does. You're basically just replaying the same exact story over and over and over again. Okay, let's see. Is the third one going to be the one where they compare themselves to the moon landing? We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. Okay, to understand this more. Given the immense, okay, we felt that it made more sense to be able to use your grav drive to jump to other solar systems. The option to fly freely among planets is still there. That's like saying, like, hey, you have the option to hit yourself in the hand with a hammer. It's like, yeah, you do, but you're not really going to because it's going to be a really crappy experience. And, you're tra and you can travel from one planet to another and land without needing to open your star map. Again, hammer analogy. If you use your scanner. However, all right, I tried using this because I was like, okay, that was real. That's a really good idea, right? And the problem was it was such a pain to find anything in the system that I just defaulted right back to using a star map. However, for an expedition like solar system travel, jumping is necessary. Remember that the trash travel also has its perks, as you can quickly do so when trying to complete quests. And we'll always, like, all right, that's not a perk. If people actually had to walk from point to point and, um, without being able to fast travel in this game, this game would have been lambasted. Like, let's not kid ourselves. This game, 
even me who vibe with this game and those who are staunch defenders of game would probably have a way, way lower to review of this. I've always been given blah 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 shit. Clutch amazing, I'm sorry. Exploration is smallest of players and then so Oh, you can find worlds that do nice resources or hidden apples. Like, yeah, you can find this stuff, but everything's basically the same. The now like the analogy I see used a lot is the cryo lab. It's like you see a cryo lab, abandoned cryo lab, you know exactly how exactly where the bodies are gonna be. There's just one building, I can't remember what it was called. Uh but basically, I knew as soon as I walked in the front door, every time I turned to the right, there was going to be a dead body sitting right there in that chair. And it got to the point where I just walked over, unlocked the one door, and then head right to the area where the downstairs where the items were kept, killed them, cleared the room, which was stupid easy, collected the items, and just got, got out. And here's the problem, right? There, you go far out, there shouldn't be anything. You should be discovering this wondrous terrain. And just breathtaking wildlife. But because the Game Bureau 3 sucks so much and their procedural generation is some of the worst I've seen in gaming, it don't happen. Now let's go back here. To keep Starfield as dynamic as possible, NPCs are not fully scripted, so weirdness can ensure the goal is to make believable characters scream realistic. Here. No. These characters do not have the level of complexity they did in Oblivion. This is a flat out lie. In Oblivion, they would have hunger, they would have lives. In this game, not really. MCS also improved the creation too. Again, Game Brio 3, creating AI enhances lots of damage direction. If you feel the need of boring, there's much blah, blah, blah. Okay, so one of these reviews that was being clipped, they compared themselves to the moon landing really cringe now i mean we could go through as all these and maybe i just over looked at one part for one of these but yeah this is not normal behavior this is a narcissist having a mental breakdown or a, a fit a tantrum that people are not like in the game and this to me just shows that behind the scenes microsoft is pretty livid at the performance of the game yeah six million downloads on game pass doesn't change the fact that right now the google trend shows that it's way down doesn't change the fact that the user base for this game is now lower than skyrim it doesn't change the fact that this game had no legs and it becomes very questionable whether modders are actually going to step in when this game finally launches so matt and booty has his work cut out for him let's just put it that way and to the xbox community i almost said xbox <laughs> you guys those of you doing this because i know a lot a lot of good chunk of the xbox to me i'm not gonna throw in the bus here because you guys recognize like hey i really hope this game was gonna be good but it turned out to be mid i like it i don't like it, it is what it is you're acting like rational people. But some of the Xbox community, you guys acting like this is somehow acceptable normal behavior. You're defending a narcissist having a temper tantrum. You need to stop. You're, you're making the Xbox community look like clowns. You know. That's the sad part about collectivism nowadays. Back in the day when you had collectivism, your community, you carried yourself very well to make sure you did not embarrass your community. Nowadays, people are like oh, just defending a blatant narcissist having a temper tantrum. This is a temper tantrum. Going this long, commenting on that many negative reviews is a temper tantrum. Whether you want to believe that they're narcissists or not, your choice. But that is a temper tantrum. That is an indication that not all is right. And there is a rumor that Todd Howard's getting gone. That after the DLC for this game drops... He's stepping down, air quotes, stepping down, and he's moving on. And that someone from Microsoft will be appointed in his place. Now, I'm not putting stock that's a definite going to happen, right? Just it's possible enough that I believe it could happen, especially now Matt Booty's in charge. And, you know, I'm actually happy Matt Booty's in charge because now 
They can take care of the pro all the problems happening at ZeniMax, from Nick Gordon being screwed over to like this blatant laziness in the engine development. We're using the same old crappy engine. I mean, again, I've said this before. Like, if you went, want me to just do a rant just about all the issues with Bethesda and ZeniMax, it would be a very, very long rant, and I would probably miss a good chunk of what's happened with them. But yeah, stop defending this crap. This crap's not normal. It's not like they're sitting there and they've improved the game. They're like, hey, you know, we know we found like exploration boring before, but we overhauled it. Come back and check it out. Let us know what you think. You know, update your review. Like if you find out you really enjoy it. Like it's not like something like that. They they're not really doing anything to improve this game. Like modders are going to have to improve this game, and it's a huge question if they're going to want to improve this game. When this game has falls below Skyrim, there's not a lot of interest in this. So if the modders don't just love this game, they're just going to stick to Skyrim and Fall Four, which is sad. This whole this whole thing is sad, and it really just shows that Bethesda has a lot of internal problems. And don't be surprised in the near future, about a year or so, you hear about some massive restructurings going on at Zenimax. Because the whole company needs it. It just does. And that's all there is to say about this. Thank you for tuning in. Hit that like, subscribe button. Y'all have a great day. Peace.